Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be learning about our Monolith X instrument and how it helps you find affinities for all of your targets of interest. And we're making those affinity measurements completely in solution. As we walk through the Monolith X today, you'll see a few different things. First off, how quick and easy it is for you to get started. The assay development is very approachable and the software is built to guide you through the whole assay optimization process. We will also demonstrate a sample interaction that shows you how to find a KD in minutes, again, using in-solution measurements that are going to help you avoid the pitfalls of immobilizing your target of interest. And then from there, we'll discuss why the immobilization-free aspect of measuring those binding affinities with the Monolith X always allows you to use minimal sample to measure interactions between a variety of different molecules. You can use proteins, small molecules, nucleotides, and you can test those in a wide variety of buffers, even including your cell lysates. These benefits make the Monolith X a great tool for your lab because it has that approachable sample handling and the data analysis is very straightforward. It also gives you the ability to tackle a diverse range of different targets as well as ligands. My name is Nathan Wallace. I am an application scientist here at Nanotemper. And in my role, I have empowered many researchers just like yourself who are not only trying to find a tool to measure your binding affinities, but you also need to make educated decisions much faster. I love to teach people about the Monolith X, how to use it, and why it is such a versatile tool for their labs. So for today, we'll start off with a brief overview of the technologies. From there, I will walk you through how to operate the instrument and how to prepare your samples for the binding assay. And then I'll wrap up, to, I'll give you a brief overview of how to start an experiment using our monolith control software. So now let's get started with the technologies. So the monolith X instrument comes with two biophysical modalities. One is our spectral shift technology and the other is our microscale thermophoresis or our MST technology. Now, both technologies determine the dissociation constant, or the KD, which shows you the strength of your molecular interactions. Now, KD is measured in terms of molarity. So if you have a higher KD value, that is one in the micromolar to the millimolar range, it's going to indicate that you have a low affinity interaction. Conversely, if you have a lower KD value, that is in the picomolar or nanomolar range, it indicates a higher affinity interaction. Now, both technologies require the labeling of your target protein using a fluorophore. I will talk about labeling a bit more later, but there are a ton of different options for labeling, each that has different benefits depending on your target protein. Now, spectral shift technology and MST, again, are both measuring light from the fluorophore, and we're doing this with high precision. This allows you to determine how the binding of a ligand impacts the overall fluorescence of your sample. How exactly they do that is slightly different depending on the technology. So first off, let's start with spectral shift technology. Now the Monolith X, as well as Nanotemper's high throughput screen instrument called the Dianthus, are the only instruments on the market that use spectral shift technology to derive your affinity constants. With spectral shift technology measurements, binding events impact the chemical environment of your fluorophore changing the overall fluorescence of that fluorophore. This change is detected as subtle shifts in the fluorophore's emission. And this can happen either in the blue direction or it can happen in the red direction. The detection of these spectral shifts is achieved through dual wavelength detection. We're measuring at exactly 650 and 670 nanometers. And we're doing that in an isothermal environment. Only the Monolith X instrument has those specialized optics and detectors that allow it to detect these very subtle shifts with high precision. We can then calculate the KD by plotting the ratios of those fluorescence intensities from our different wavelengths against the concentration of its binding partner. All binding events trigger a change in the chemical environment, and only the Monolith X is built with the precision optics required to measure these emission shifts. The precision optics also mean that the Monolith detects changes on a very small amount of labeled target. So you'll be able to use just picomoles of material to find your KD values. And our spectral shift technology measures those interactions completely independent of mass or size changes. With that being said, the Monolith X allows you to find KDs even when other methodologies fail, or you struggle to even get enough material to work with in the first place. Now the second technology in the instrument is called MST. Similar to our spectral shift technology, 
MST is going to measure variations in fluorescence. However, in this case, a very precise laser in the instrument changes the temperature of the system by between somewhere in two to five degrees Celsius. And the changes in fluorescence from that fluorophore in response to the temperature change is again impacted based upon the bound state of your target. The change in fluorescence is then plotted against the concentration of its binding partner to obtain that dissociation constant, or KD. Among others, MST can also provide you with an in-depth understanding of your sample quality, as it helps you differentiate between binding events and aggregation. So now that you've learned about the technologies, I will walk you through how to operate the monolith and how to prepare your samples for the binding assay. Let's get started with your experiment. You start your experiments by labeling one molecule with a fluorophore. Then you mix a fixed amount of that fluorescently labeled target molecule with a dilution series of its binding partner, the ligand. To label your proteins, we have a wide variety of very easy to use labeling kits available. These can take anywhere from about an hour maximum, although some of them take as little as 15 minutes to complete. The kits are designed and optimized for our spectral shift technology measurements. So you will get data with great signal to noise ratios from your measurements. There are kits with site specific covalent or even affinity based labeling approaches. The kit that you choose is going to depend upon your target and buffer needs. The great news is our fluorophores are very small and do not impact the integrity of the target protein at all. And the good news is you don't have to be an expert to determine the best labeling strategy. We've actually built in a digital protein labeling assistant that can help guide you through that process. So now let's move on to our sample preparation. Selecting your labeling strategy is the only big decision that you'll need to make. Once you have determined your labeling strategy, Monolith software makes the rest of the assay development process very straightforward. Unlike other binding affinity tools like SPR or ITC, you don't have to be an expert on the platform to perform an experiment. All experiments on the Monolith X are performed using glass capillaries. You will prepare your samples according to the software either in Eppendorf tubes, 96 well plates, or my personal favorite, the 384 well plates. Now the glass capillaries will perfectly load the appropriate volume, which in this case is 10 microliters via capillary action. You can do this individually, or you can preload our sample holder, which the spacing matches perfectly with a 384 well plate. You can then dip all of the capillaries simultaneously, and then you're ready to load your sample into the instrument. Place the sample holder into the instrument, close the drawer, and you're ready to begin your experiment. Now working in capillaries means that, number one, you don't have to worry about the fragile fluidics or moving parts. Secondly, unlike with those immobilization-based technologies, you don't have to regenerate your chips or sensors between experiments. Or if your target is compromised by binding, such as in the case of covalent inhibitors, you can simply get rid of those capillaries and set up a new experiment. No fluidics means you have a much more robust instrument that has less downtime and fewer maintenance concerns. Plus, you have less fear that experimenting with different detergents or even dirty samples like lysate will actually compromise your instrument. For the next steps, we will now move on to Monolith Software. Enter your sample information and Monolith Software will take you through step-by-step -step instructions on how to prepare and run your assay. Monolith's intuitive software not only guides you through assay setup, but also provides you with immediate feedback on assay optimization based on the results. This allows anyone on your team to set up and operate Monolith. Now, there are several steps in the assay development process for when you're starting a new interaction. And each step is designed to ensure that your target and ligand concentration and your buffer conditions are optimal for making those KD determinations. Each step just takes a few minutes to complete and the software often offers suggestions along the way for improving your assay. I often hear with other binding affinity technologies, there's not always a clear next step when that assay fails or you get bad data. And it can take even weeks of trial and error to get those best conditions for your assay. With our Monolith X instrument, optimization is usually complete within a working day or two. And once you find the right conditions, you can get those reproducible, reliable KD values in less than 10 minutes per replicate. Now let's take a closer look at the software 
so you really see what I mean about assay guidance. You'll see for yourself how the intuitive navigation reduces the activation energy of getting started with affinity measurements. Start by clicking on the new project button and then name your experiment. Choose between a binary experiment for interactions with two binding partners or ternary binding experiments if you're working on protein complexes or to greater pathways. For today, we will just look at the binary binding experiment setup. Once you select the type of binding, you'll see a few different experiment types, which are used for optimization steps. The pretest guides you through the basic tests that are recommended before conducting a binding experiment. This includes checking fluorescence after labeling and ensuring that your target is not aggregating or sticking to the capillary walls significantly. This experiment stage allows you to compare up to six different buffer conditions to select the one most suitable for your target's stability. The binding check guides you step by step through a quick and easy assay development setup and analyzes whether a binding event can be detected. The binding affinity mode provides detailed instructions for performing full affinity measurements using Monolith. Once the optimization is complete, it takes only a few minutes to measure binding affinity and get a KD with the Monolith X. I'd like to mention here, if you choose to add Monolith X to your lab, our team of PhD scientists will help teach you how to set up all sorts of creative affinity experiments with Monolith. Once you select the experiment type, you'll move on to the plan page. The plan page allows you to name your components, enter their stock concentrations, and list your buffer recipe. Once that information is entered, you will move to the instructions page. The instructions page uses the information previously entered on the plan page to give specific step-by-step -step pipetting instructions using experiment-specific molecule names and concentrations. The instructions are adapted to the chosen experimental mode and stock concentrations. There is an option to print your instructions for experiment setup at your bench or for pasting into your lab notebook. You have now completed the preparation phase and are ready to move forward and start your measurements. The results page lets you follow data acquisition while experiments are running. The exact parameters displayed on the results page will depend on which experiment type you selected. Generally, it will tell you whether the experiment was successful and offer guidelines for the next steps in the case that it was not. By clicking the review buttons of the individual parameter panels, it is possible to get more details concerning the respective parameter. Let's review a few of the feedback panels. The capillary scans panel shows the fluorescence peaks recorded for all individual capillaries. The peak shape indicates whether the fluorescent molecule is adsorbing into the inside of the capillary wall, while the peak height indicates fluorescence intensity. Both parameters are important for a successful experiment and are assessed by the software automatically. The fluorescence traces panel shows all the traces of the fluorescence ratio recorded for the individual capillaries. The shape of the traces gives information on the homogeneity of the sample. When executing a full affinity experiment, the dose response curve panel displays concentration dependent changes of ratio 670 over 650 nanometers, which are used to calculate the binding affinity, the KD, or even the EC50 values. The signal of each capillary is plotted against the ligand concentration in the capillary. A conclusion is provided on the bottom left, if available. To accelerate your assay design, recommendations for assay improvement are given on the bottom right. Additionally, Monolith software allows you to merge and analyze different replicates and compare the affinities of interactions between different ligands. To collate and assess all of the information regarding your experiment, click Create Report at the bottom of the results page. A PDF document will be created for you to view share, or print. So whether you're ranking ligand affinities, determining how point mutations affect binding to a target of interest, or monitoring how buffer additives impact KD, Monolith helps you compare many aspects of affinity measurements, always with minimal sample usage and is immobilization and fluidics free. Today, you have experienced how the Monolith X is the only way to get direct binding affinities in solution using a very small amount of sample. Monolith X stands out for its user-friendly interface, 
data analysis, making it quick and easy for anyone in your lab to get started and make decisions. It's also a very versatile tool that is able to tackle a diverse range of your targets and ligands with more flexibility in your buffer options. Thank you for your time today. If you'd like more information, you can check out our website, nanotempertech.com. We look forward to partnering with you on your research. Have a great day.